Hey guys, welcome to custom flame build part two. So this is going to be setting up the uh, and installing the raid card and setting up the storage for Autodesk uh, flame to see it. So let's jump right in. Okay, so we've placed the raid in and you see it shows up in the slot and it's going to initialize. And what we want to do is just press control R once these guys have initialized. And we have all eight uh, one terabyte SSDs in there. So I'm just going to Wait for it to get to 100 and let it show the other ones and then control R. And now we're in. So a couple of things uh, to note with this too. So there's um, you know a couple little caveats. So the main thing was is uh, in this particular uh, motherboard, um, you know I'm, it's capable of 40 lanes um, as well as the CPU obviously. Um, but as always placement of where the um, where the cards go um, can dictate, um, you know, where you know what kind of speed you're going to get. So initially, when I did install this guy, um, I had it placed in the middle of the graphics cards, and I'll show you pictures of it. And um, what happened was, is I was getting great speeds. I was getting um, in RAID five, uh, 4.2 gig read and uh, 2.9 write, but um, background reactor uh, was disabled just because of the slot placement. So. Um, the second GPU has to be matching in terms of speed assignment too. Um, so, you know, that's another thing. So, again, if you are thinking on getting the system, um, you know, you don't have to worry about this as much if, um, you know, if you're not doing a dual GPU setup. So, you know, that's just something to, uh, to keep in mind. So, again, uh, like you'll see, uh, it's all the way down in slot 5, uh, well, the, the last slot, which is 4 actually, um, all the way down the bottom. And the other thing I've done too, um, I'm just going to press Control N just to go over to the properties of this guy. Um, if I press F5, you see uh, in the photos too, uh, I've chucked a little uh, 120 mil fan there too, and you see um, it was, uh, the temperature was around, you know, after being on for about 15, 20 minutes, it was about uh, close to 80 degrees. So that little fan sitting in front now has taken it right down and halved it, um, and it's helping with the, the bottom GPU too. So we're down to 46 Celsius, which is good. So. Again, I'm just going to control N. So um, another thing too, before we get into this, you know, full disclosure, I'm not, I'm not a Linux guy. I'm not a, a systems guy, you know, like this is not something I know very well. So again, uh, this is just me curious and um, wanting to build this on my own. Um, so the first thing is when I did make this guy first as well, um, after I got those good speeds and then I got in trouble with um, missing background reactor I uh, I kind of panicked because I wanted to see what was going on and I did a hard shutdown of the system and um, I kind of freaked out the raid and it started beeping and you know all of a sudden a lot of some of my drives weren't even showing up and I thought I'd, I'd fried all my all my drives um, uh, luckily I didn't I had to um, from the Asus uh, software BIOS I just did a, a secure erase from there um, I'm sure you could do it from um, you know, Mac or Windows side, whatever. Um, but then they do show up. So uh, right now you're looking at it too. Um, if I just up and down, uh, I've already got a RAID 5 um, using eight virtual drives, like you can see working. Um, but, you know, for the purpose of this, I am going to kill it. So if we just press uh, F2, you see uh, we can delete virtual disk. And we're just going to press up and we'll go yes. So you see by default, um, all the, all the drives are reading. You've got uh, so two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And, um, you know, a good habit, and this is thanks to Richard Keats um, from Synesis, is to, uh, you know, label each drive as you plug it in so you know which one to take out if you have to rebuild, um, you know. And he also uh, gave me a little, his list of what he usually sets raids at. So that's what I'm going to use for this. So the other thing too is when I did have failed drives, um, they might not show up if I go to this this main page they might not show up there but if you go to the uh, the PD management guide using um, control N they actually show up in here and if they aren't uh, they'll come up and right now all the states is here UG but um, some of them would be disabled or UB so you just have to press F2 and then uh, prior to this I just did drive erase and then simple just for all of them just so they started um, on a level playing field. So again, um, you know, it's just what I had to do because, you know, all in all, I, I did, I broke the raid kind of because of me uh, 
messing around. Now, one other thing before we get into this is I found the, the cables very, very uh, temperamental. Um, as much as a tiny little touch once they're in, and um, it freaks out as well, and it will think it's gone. So, again, like once you get these guys in, I'd, I'd tie them down as, as much as you can and get them out of the line of anything else and just do not touch the connection to the, uh, to the controller. Um, and I don't know if that's a right thing because, again, I'm not a system guy, but anyway. So let's um, let's start building uh, a RAID 5. So again, this is assuming you got all the uh, all your discs in there and ready to go. Um, by default, again, there's um, nothing. They're just showing up as RAID. So first thing I'm going to do, I'm just going to go up to the top here, and this is where, if we press Enter, this is where we can start building our uh, our RAID. So again, this is a super modern interface, obviously. But um, let's go on. And again, I. Uh, I had a little uh, cheat sheet of settings again from Richard Keats, so thank you, thank you, Richard. Um, he's asked a lot of my, well, he's answered a lot of my questions for this, which is nice of him. So, again, so we're just going to press enter, and we're going to go with RAID 5 for this guy. And to uh, enable all these drives, we just press enter, enter, and just add these guys through. And you see that's what we get 6.681 terabytes based off RAID 5 from 8, which is, you know, exactly what's expected. Now I'm just going to up and down and go down to advanced and press enter. Now the stripe size, I was uh, recommended from, I've gotten conflicting things for stripe size. Um, I got a recommendation of 128. Um, I also got a recommendation of 64. Um, and then there's also, you know, 512 and one uh, megabyte. Um, I went with Richards for this just because I trust him on this one. Um, you know, I I think the original one I did, I tested, I thought, you know, bigger was better, and I think I did, 512. Um, maybe that's why it had bigger bigger size, but again, it depends on your... The the base size of that can determine, even if you have a small, small file size, say 10 kilobytes, it's always going to write as 512, so there's all these little RAID things that I don't care to get into, so I trust, you know, what um, Richard gave me, which was 64. So that's what I did for that. For read ahead... Um, I just just did that as a head. Um, I left that at the defaults. Don't don't ask me why. For write policy again, I was recommended to keep it at write back. There's write through. There's a bunch of other guys, but again, I just kept it at, at write back. Um, I'm not going to do cached. It's just direct again. And then um, again, everything was at the defaults. Um, now, I again, I didn't configure a hot spare or. Disable BGI will actually disable the background creation of this, but I just want to do it um, in the background. So you say initialization will begin. You're going to destroy all my RAID 5 already set up. Yes, that's fine. Let's press OK and then press OK again. And then again, we press down arrow and then OK one more time. And you see on the right, it's giving us a progress uh, saying 49. And this is just in the initial creation. So after this, um, It'll take probably a couple minutes to set in. It actually goes into a pretty, I'd say it's about 35 minutes. Um, see, now we got the initialization complete. Press enter. Um, so nothing will happen to start with, but once this guy kicks in, uh, it's, uh, yeah, it's gonna be a little bit of a wait. Um, the last thing to note too is when I first set this guy up, um, to get to the latest uh, firmware, that was another thing, is maybe my issues with the RAID and all that might have been firmware related. So I'd suggest if you do set this up, put the card in first in the right slot with no cables attached, boot into the OS, download the drivers for the Mega RAID um, UI, uh, launch it from there, download the firmware, and then then it, like shut down after you've installed the firmware, connect the drives and do the thing. So I'll show you where you get the firmware and how easy it is to do, but um, it's just worth noting. So. We'll let this, um, I'm just going to wait until this kicks in so you can see what it um, shows up as. But we'll give it um, we'll give it a second. You see the RAID 5 level thing is, is still stuck there. We'll let it kick over. So I'll, um, I'll skip ahead and hopefully we'll see it just initiate. Okay, so um, you see now we've got the little progress bar that finally pops up. And again, this is going to take a little bit long. Um, you're actually also safe to control alt backspace and reboot, and that's um that's what we're gonna do. We're gonna reboot, and I'll show you how we can monitor this from the um 
the Mega Raid UI too. So let's um let's jump ahead. All right, hey guys. Uh, so we're back um, again. I've just rebooted. Um, I've logged in as root. Um, uh, one other quick thing I wanted to note is uh, doing eight um, one terabyte drives in a RAID 5 was not recommended by Richard too um, because I did mention that he recommended these things. He recommended a uh, 4 to 6 uh, setup for RAID uh, 5. Um, I'm trying out something new. I'm going to run it in 8. Um, it might be good, it might not. Um, whatever, I want to I wanna see what it's like. Um, so yeah, I got that out of the way. So now that we're logged in, now that the RAID's rebuilding in the background, we need to be able to see it. So um, LSI got bought by Broadcom, so the, the default drivers for this are broadcom.com support slash search. Again, this will be on the um, on the links. And this is, um, I've just typed this in here, which is the, the guy we're looking for, which is the 93618i. And if we just press enter, I mean, you can, again, I just went to the latest version of the Mega Raid and then the latest version of the um, the firmware. So the first thing, it's actually not too bad. Um, this is the, the driver you look for, which is the Linux Mega Raid underscore SAS underscore REL tar. And it, when you extract that, it gives you this guy. And this is actually the most straightforward thing for installing. And again, this is from a non Linux. I wish I didn't have to live in command line, although I'm kind of getting used to it, user. Um, so if we just again jump into the SAS components and just look for, I just did it from here, the Red Hat and CentOS 7, double click. And the best bit is we have um, RPMs. And RPMs, in case you didn't know, um, allow you just to uh, do the old open with, and they will work with software install. Um, I already have mine installed. Um, but literally, all you do is just click install, and it does what you're used to, and it installs. Now, what it does install, if we just go down to our guy here, and we just type in search M, it installs these three guys. Um, so what I went with was the, if we open this guy, you see, again, um, even though with the RAID's rebuilding, we can still, still access it. So this is um, this is a cool utility that you can access, not just in root, but um, in any user, but you do have to log in as root. So if we click on the IP address, and again, it's our normal login credentials, just like for the computer. So I'm just gonna type in my password. You see, this will give us also progress of how the RAID build is going. Um, and again, uh, See, it's optimal right now, which is good. We can go to physical, we can see all our guys, no complaints. Um, we have the initialization, initialization progress, which is telling us, you know, it's about, I'd say about 15, 10% all of the way through. That's good. And again, um, we can monitor here. Um, we can set up um, it to give us little emails and stuff like that. Um, somewhere in here, I think, yeah, configure alerts. You can choose your mail server, email, um, you know, if you want. Know, and you would uh, want you know notifications if something's not right. Although if it is a setup at home, um, the beep that this thing makes is more than enough notification to be honest. Um, again, so this is great because we can quickly we don't have to go into that uh, crappy kind of command line control R thing to uh, initialize. So again, like I mentioned before though, um, the recommended thing I would do though for this would be downloading this, you know, like I said, inserting the card into the bottom slot first no no uh no cables start up downloading this guy and then installing this mega raid storage ui manager and then after that again before adding drives before building updating firmware again i'm already on the latest but again the steps to do this to get this latest firmware would be download you know like i just said and then we download the mega raid ui manager and then update firmware and again the firmware lives in here too like when we go here there's a little firmware guy and i just clicked on the latest and again that when we look at it um, if i go back to our downloads okay so, um so the firmware guy was this it was the 24 dot blah 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 which expanded into here and there was these two roms okay and literally it was just choosing when i went in here and went into update firmware and then browse for it and it was in this guy I use Mr. 3108FW and you open it um, and it will prompt you to say yes and it will do the whole update thing. Um, it'll pretty much give you a progress bar like this um, to, do the, uh, to do the process. 
So again, we'll wait for this to initialize, but again, this is important to know how to um, update the firmware. Um, again, it's a little bit backwards in the steps, but um, it's just, it just made sense. I didn't want to reflash it to an older one just for the sake of the video. Um, so we'll let this initialize again, and then when we get back, um, it'll be initialized, and we'll set it up to be a frame store in uh, Flame. All right, and we're back. Um, as you can see, uh, it's all been created. Um, it happened back here. Uh, background initial initialization completed on VD00. So we're good to close this guy and let's um, let's get into getting this guy to be our frame store. Now, unfortunately, um, this is not as easy on the Linux side as it is on the Mac side, but that's to be expected. Now, I'm using a combination of some resources for this. So the first thing that I use for a lot of this um, particular process is um, from uh, jasonmyers.com who uh, Jason has heaps of cool um, Linux and kind of color and um, heaps of cool different articles. Um, some relating to Flame, some relating to Red Hat, um, some to Luster and he's got a cool uh, thing. So yeah, be sure to check out um, his website. And then again, we're just going to grab bits we need. So I'm just going to scroll down. The first bit I'm going to grab, don't need any of this stuff. It's literally, that's just explaining the disk names, but we just want to grab this guy, which is configuring a new uh, frame store volume from scratch. So I'm going to grab this command and copy. And again, it's going to output the devices and I'm going to paste. And we'll see that uh, dev SDA is what we want because um, it says it's seven terabytes. The other one is dev stb and that one um, if you look at the partitions underneath the stb ones um, are again so that's obviously my system drive so we know dev sda is um is what we want um, to create our uh, frame store and mount and all this fun stuff that we have to do so the next thing we're going to do um, again we've already determined our name and we're going to use the next little command which is uh parted which makes a partition um, like it sounds. So again, I'm just going to copy this and I'll, again, I'll have links to this on the website. Copy this, paste it in. Again, the only thing we have to change is our uh, name. So by default on his, it was SDB. So we just have to arrow over and do SDA and then hit enter. You see it matches. That's the main thing just to make sure. And yes, and enter. Okay, so once that's done, it should be called that. Okay, so next step is we're gonna convert our guy into a physical volume. So we're gonna again, copy this, but again, apply it to ours. So copy and paste in the console. Again, based off the name that we created, so it'll be SDA and then one. So again, we're just t making sure that nothing has been created yet, because that's really what we're doing right now, which is creating the physical volume. So again, I'm just double checking. Um, Gonna paste that in and again i'm just going to change that from db1 to da1 so it matches our printout and enter and you see physical volume dev sda1 successfully created which is exactly what we want okay so we don't need to add extra stuff so we can verify it just by doing this so we go copy and paste that again it's another command just to make sure and yes, it's right. We can see it matches our terabytes that were created, 6.68. That's fine. I'm happy with that. It's all good. And again, it matches the name that we just set up through the, the PV command that we just created. Again, now we can do the next fun bit. Okay, so now the next step is creating a volume group. Again, I'm just going to copy that paste that in and again we just need to change it from SDB1 to SDA1 or whatever your printout is enter and we see again volume group VG00 successfully created which is exactly what we want so this VG display now if we copy that and paste that in that's going to tell us some stuff we need to know and it's specifically in this uh, total PE um, and free PE um, it just applies for when we create um, this next guy right here. So this is where we create the logical volume. So we're going to give it a name and uh, copy this and we'll paste that in. OK, 
Okay, so a couple things to change first. So first thing to change is the actual, the number. And that number is, again, the command we just ran. We want to copy that output for the total PE and then just delete the default one that was in there and paste that in. And then again, if we follow this, we can see, yep, we've obtained that using our display, which we did. So it worked, nothing to see here. Okay, the next bit is stripe size. So I did the rate at 64, so I'm assuming 64. I don't know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't work. If it does, fine, so 64. And then the N and then the L, vol L is the default name. So let's change that name. And let's change it to something literal like RAID 5. Five, spell. Okay, that's all good. Yep, yep, yep. And again, let's, um, let's enter in and see, uh, see if this guy works. Again, it matches our volume group, the VG00. It's the other thing, just double checking and enter. We see logical volume, RAID 5 created. Huzzah. Okay, so the next step is formatting. So this is the, uh, the bit that kind of confused me a bit on this, to be honest. Like it's asking me to create sizes. So this is where I mix and matched with stuff and it just worked for me. So, you know, um, I just went a different route. Um, I'll show you how I did it again. I didn't want to have to calculate that stuff. So I found another one, which was, was to do with creating z raid zeros. But again, it's just a very easy MKF guy that doesn't have all that extra stuff. And I just, again, change it from extension four to XFS. And then I'm just going to put my, my path in there. And again, I'm just going to do a DF dash H just to, oh, I should do the grep thing again. To see what is yeah there it is there's where it's mapped so if I just copy that that line there because that's my guy that's newly newly created and again it matches in terabytes and all that stuff copy that and again let's just delete the default for that and paste that so we are making that guy XFS and it is done so last little bits that we're gonna do again um, we want to create a mount point so we're going to do again I don't want to mount this to storage media I want to do it somewhere else just in the way that you might want to do this to a different drive if you have a different drive or creating this te temporary frame store or a new frame store just for a job so again it's make directory MNT and I'm going to call it raid 5 so I'm going to press enter I'm going to call it, spell it so it's not just the wrong way around enter and let's just pull up a file browser just to verify, we could do it from terminal, but I find don't like terminal, and there's our guy. Okay, now the last bit, we don't need all that crazy stuff. I, I already set up my, um, again, I, I just did this simple and it worked, so I'm just gonna go to the Etsy fstab, so I'm gonna go gedit uh, forward slash etc forward slash fstab, and you see, I had one, I tried a couple ones, I did a RAID zero that was, fun but um, I'm just gonna delete that bottom one because I don't need that yeah kill that and you see the above one is what was working before I killed that um, frame store for the start of this video so really it's um, there's only a couple little different things okay so yeah I just need to copy in what I had so again I'm just gonna go Okay, so literally I can just uncomment that, which is good. And again, just copy that path, first path, the mapping path or whatever that works that you have to do to where it lives, paste that in. And then we just have to tell it our mount point. So that's right. And then again, the name RAID5 R. And that is it. So I'm going to save. And that's saved. And I'm going to try to mount. Dash A. And it's not working because I am. 
the edit thing, ignore that. I'm going to do a new console. I'm going to do again, mount dash a, df dash a, just to see, and our RAID 5 is there. So it's been saved to Etsy and the F stab. So this should, uh, in theory, um, do exactly what we want on reboot and always auto mount because it's been added to the F stab. So let's, um, let's again, just making sure I haven't done anything or missed anything. Yep. So let's um, cross our fingers and uh, hope this works. So um, we're going to reboot and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Stand by. All right. And we've just rebooted. So let's check that auto mount is working. Give it a second. And it's going to attempt to open all that stuff, but I'm happy to just close that. So let's just do console and then just do uh, df dash h. And you see it did. It mounted our RAID 5. Um, another way to check too is if we just go down here to file manager and we go to root and then mnt and right click properties. You see um, it's again, it's associating that properly. Now the next fun part is how do we get this uh, to play nice with Flame? Remember, um, you know, usually you'll go this, the storage media route. I went this route because sometimes it's nice to know how to assign things outside of this. Um, and I'm going to show tests to showing that um, back burner and background reactor and exporting and importing works. You know, this doesn't ruin anything. This is just, again, how I got it to work and considering this is Linux and I'm not a Linux person, I'm quite happy now that I've set this up. Let's see how we get this to work with Flame. Now, we're just going to quickly log out and we're going to go into a Flame account. Okay, uh, there's this weird uh, UI thing, um, but whatever, let's just jump in. It only happens when logging out and recording, by the way. Okay, so we're going to go. And uh, CentOS makes that noise, and you probably haven't heard it because it's usually uh, audio played in the machine room. So let's go to the Flame setup. Again, these are super small, but I know kind of what I'm looking for. I'm going to go to manual edit there. Go all the way down to the bottom and down here. Trust me, is the, this is the default path and partition name for this. So I'm just going to delete this because I set up a temp one. If you remember the last episode, I'm going to apply um, uh, for version one just to do, remember, the temp frame store. So now, now it's not going to, um, it's not going to launch. So if I do open Flame, give it a second, you see no configured storage, no mounts, nothing. So that's good. That's what, exactly what I wanted. So again, I'm just going to, I'll go out of there and let's um let's actually log out again so I'm going to control alt backspace okay so again let's just go back to root again um, the reason I'm doing this too is this method does all the permission stuff creates all the folders I can't um, screw anything up so that's kind of why I like it so the whole point of removing that was so we could reinstall again and I'll show you what I mean. So I'm going to go CD and then LS and then CD desktop LS and again I'm just going to current directory AU tab underscore and then tab. I'm going to go into the flame and then LS and again let's quickly install flame again. The reason I'm doing this will be apparent in a second. Again, I'm going to keep my custom graphics. Is if we leave it to the default where it's looking, and then we click continue. Because remember, last time we skipped this in, in version one. If we do continue, and then go all the way down to MNT, and then choose our RAID 5, doing this will set the, the CMOD stuff, the, the folder structure, everything, permissions. And you don't have to worry about if you did it right in the command line. Again, 
It's not the Autodesk blessed way, but it worked. So let's test it out. Okay, now let's, again, we're gonna get the weird, um, the weird small menu, but uh, we'll just power through it just so we can see if flame works. So let's, um, let's log out. All right, let's test it out. So double click on flame. Oh, we have a storage. So let's try again. Whoops. Sorry about that. Let's just try a test uh, speed. Again, um, if we look, it's got the right path. You see it's set everything for us. So MNT, RAID 5, Autodesk Media. Uh, actually, before I do this too, um, just to be safe, and I know it doesn't really matter, we're going to do DF dash H. You can't even see it, but I'm pretty sure it's it's mounted. So again, let's, let's try this again. So double click on that. Let's quickly do uh, uh, storage test um, again. Let's say put it to 10 bit um, uncompressed. That's fine. Let's create and just verify that background reactor is there and that we can import and export. Um, sometimes it's not there by default. If it isn't, all I have to do is reboot. So let's try background reactor is there, even though it's in really weird. Again, it's just the font little weirdness that happens, but let's do some tests. So first thing, let's go into preferences in any of these. You can see video free. That's right. We've got eight hours of 10 bit. That makes sense. So we are seeing the right storage. So again, this is a 1920, 1080, um, 10 bit. Let's just do a test disks to see what kind of speed we're getting. Again, this is, there's a million different ways to do these. Um, if you guys want me to try different ones, once this is posted, just give me a comment to, of some command to do. Again, I was getting good read writes. Um, I was using disk as well. So you can see that's pretty good. Uh, three, three, seven frames per second and two, six, seven, oh megabytes per second. So 2.6 gig. So I'm okay with that, but let's, again, let's just test that this stuff actually works. So let's just do, um, I don't know. Let's just do noise. Let's do 15 seconds. Whoops. 15 seconds worth. And we'll just create that. Let's see, it's nice and quick. Um, so let's try, um, open that as a sequence and let's see what that um, let's see if, first of all let's verify that background reactor works so I'm just going to go to um, some blur some stuff up let's go 50 and let's just put a color corrector on it again this is just to test that this is working and didn't screw anything up and let's just do that so select background reactor click it you see the job's been sent and it's processing and it's working. That means background reactor is working, which means it's seen both cards with the RAID, which is perfect. So that's done. Now let's again, let's quickly test. If we just press R, let's test export. So again, I'm just going to go to um, root and then user discrete. And we'll go to just flame because that's where we are. We'll go to desktop and I'm just going to go to movie and guess wherever this stops on. I hope that's Final Cut. Nope. Here we go. ProRes LT. Um, I won't even export in foreground. So let's see if Backburner even works. Again, I'm not. This is just my config and it's working. And Backburner is working. So let's, again, let's verify. And let's go to Import. And there we are. That's our export. It worked. And then again, just to check and make sure, let's turn on Cache and try to import it. So I'm going to uh, include alpha, why not? Import, let's rename noise2 and press R and I believe that's already done. Yeah, so it's already done for the export and the cache. So there you go. We set up, um, created a RAID um, from scratch, um, installed the RAID utility, uh, installed the file system, created volume groups and partitions, stuff that should be easier, but it isn't. But anyway, um, now we know how to do it and it works and it's quick. And um, 
yeah that's going to be it for part two guys um i hope you enjoyed it if you have any comments or questions please um uh, leave one below cheers <laughs>